Welcome back, everyone. To Open line talking with Dr. Lee Williams Jr., TSU professor. He's also coordinator of the North Nashville Heritage Project. We've been looking back um, newspaper articles and, and advertisements and that kind of thing that, that really highlight very dark periods. And my question is, we went to break. You've studied all of these different periods in our history. What is your thought about where we're headed? Are you optimistic about the future? Are we overcoming this? Can we overcome our our past? Or, or what, what do you what do you think? I um to be frank, I don't know how things are going to turn out. I can um, I can analyze and interpret the past. I can tell you what I see now, and I can try to make a forecast based upon what I've seen before. And I'll be honest, most of the time I'm wrong. Um, but what I, I, what I see, particularly in North Nashville, is really troubling because I, um, I moved here in 2009 and um, much of the built environment is disappearing overnight. Um, I was on Charlotte um, and I rode by Haddock's Pharmacy and I looked at the side of it and the doors were swinging open and I was thinking, I was like, wow, they're getting ready to tear that down. Mm -hmm. I can remember um, my, my barber, uh, um, J.T. Smith, I would go to his barber shop and that was a really special place in the community. You could go there and just get all kinds of information, all kinds of wisdom from the elders that came through there. And I mean, people from um, all walks of life came through there, but it was a space where everybody was pretty much seen as equal. Um, that's gone, they're putting a the park there. And I'm, I'm pretty sure people are going to go there and, and, and get enjoyment from that park. But I, um, with the barbershop gone, that's something that's lost to posterity. And only 10, 20 years from now, I guess I'll be the one that's talking about what a good time people had there. Um, right out of grad school, I was trained as a preservationist. So I have a deep appreciation for the built environment. Um, Jubilee Hall is one of my favorite spaces on in this city. I mean, of course, it's one of the coolest pieces of architecture in the city, but still, it. Um, I look for it every morning when I, I, I go to work. Um, there's a sort of soul, a sort of power in those stones that um, you can't get just by reading a book. Um, but the point I'm trying to get at is most, if not all of our, our, our special spaces, the spaces that animated Jefferson Street are, are gone. I know um, the Elks Lodge is still there where you had the classic guitar battle between Jimi Hendrix and Johnny Jones. That's still there. Um, but the hotel that the guy told me he first caught a glimpse of the beautiful Tina Turner. <laughs> <laughs> That's been gone. Um, so you worry about the loss of that kind of history? Not only, not only that, but um, the people that live in the margins, um, the poor folks that, and I probably shouldn't say poor folks, but the folks that we oftentimes don't pay attention to that lived in in North Nashville, the ones that would welcome in TSU students when the housing was unable to accommodate them, the ones that heard the band playing on Saturday and realized that there's a football game and they come out to see what is going on on campus. Um, they're being pushed out and with, with them their histories as well. The thing that made Jefferson Street, Jefferson Street, the thing that made North Nashville, North Nashville is is, is being gone. I, I, I do enjoy 
modern architecture, but I don't think it should come at the expense of the most vulnerable um, in our society. All right, we're gonna go, let's go to um, Wendy. Hello, Wendy. Hello. Hello, Wendy, go right ahead. Hi, Dr. Williams, I follow you on Twitter as well. Right. And Thank you. I am a native Floridian living in Nashville um, as well, but I was a, I'm, I'm a wildcat, you're a rattler. Oh, but anyway, no. um, I have a question about Riverside Sanitarium. Um, I have been tracing an uncle on Ancestry.com in Florida, born in 1872. I followed him to Key West. He was a teacher, and then lo and behold, I find out that he died in Nashville at Riverside Sanitarium mm -hmm. in 1956. So my question was, how do I how do I uh, close that loop? It, I'm wondering if he may have been a teacher who came to Fisk or TSU, or did did blacks travel to Nashville to, to come to Riverside for medical treatment? I I know nothing about Riverside Sanitarium. All right, what about that? Yeah. Um, the first place I would start would be the um, Tennessee State Library and Archives. Um, I'm, I'm fairly certain that they would have um, some kind of records for you. And also, um, I don't know, and, and um, if you follow me, you send me a, a um, direct message later tonight. Um, Check and see if you can find that death certificate too. That might give you some information. And and the the um, the census records as well. Um, but that's 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 an interesting interesting problem. I'd um, those would be the first places I would look. And I'll, I'll think about it on the way home, and maybe I can have something <laughs> better to tell you. All right, that's good. All right, we're going to take a break. Uh, we'll come back, uh, really begin to wrap everything up. There are several people that we won't get to. Sorry. Uh, thanks for calling in. But we'll, we'll take a break. Be back right after this.